welcome to another edition of Florida Newsmakers from the Florida State Capitol with our very special guest, Majority Leader Senator Lizbeth Benequisto. Senator, thank you so much for having us here today. Good morning. You do have your hands full. You're also serving as <laughs> Vice Chair of Senate Appropriations. So let's just jump right into the budget. You know, how are, how are negotiations going or how are the discussions going? Well, we present our budget this afternoon in the Senate Budget Committee. And we're moving along uh, at a really great pace and have had a lot of interaction with our members. And, and we think we're building a very strong budget focused on the things that we find most important. Florida's economy has been rebounding. Does this give you more flexibility, or the legislature overall, more flexibility in, in focusing on building reserves and perhaps um, <laughs> providing more funding to our priorities? Well, we're being very cautious because there are a lot of things that can affect our, our budget process and the economy. And certainly what's happening in Washington gives us all a little, a little reason to worry. But we are very focused on being fiscally responsible. And in that, we are projecting that we want our reserves to be $2.9 billion. We want to be very strong, uh, in a very strong position to react in case of emergency. And at the same time, funding those priorities that we spoke about, and education certainly, certainly top of mind. Well, Governor Scott has made education a priority. So mm -hmm. how is the budget or the Senate budget going to be able to address the teacher raises and, and providing schools with more flexibility? That's a great question. We share the commitment to public education and certainly providing an opportunity to showcase our best teachers and, and the instructional personnel in our classrooms. And we put uh, $480 million towards raises for instructional personnel based on performance. And it includes, our budget includes in, uh, individual debit cards for teachers so that they can buy supplies for their classrooms. And we're very proud, again, to showcase our commitment our, and, and the value we place on public education here in the Senate. Medicaid expansion has really been sort of a topic of discussion and um, you know, with varying opinions. Mm -hmm. Does the, the budget have to address the Medicaid expansion issue? Well, the Senate has, has voted, the P, uh, Select Committee on PPACA has voted not to expand Medicaid in its current form. Senator Negron has put forward a proposal to, to find a way to serve those most in need uh, who don't have access to health insurance now, but it's through an insurance uh, subsidy plan. We don't contemplate that in our current budget, uh, but that will move through the process. And, and if we can get our friends in the House to, to believe, as we believe, that, that folks should get care, um, then, then maybe we will readdress that. Historically, the Medicaid budget really, it, or, or Medicaid costs, actually eats up more than a third of the budget. So is that, is, is that sort of tying our hands as, as our population continues to grow? It, it had in the past, and certainly it does continue to be a significant portion of the budget. But with great leadership here in the Senate and in the House in years past, we've instituted a, a program, Managed Care for Medicaid, so that we can better manage the expenditures and encourage folks to live healthier lives and, and, and be healthier for the long term. Another issue near and dear to your heart is the Cancer Treatment Fairness Act. Can you tell us why that's so important and what problem are you trying to solve with the act? It, it is very important to, to not just me personally, but so many folks back home. And, and, and the reason is each day 324 people are diagnosed with cancer. And of that group, some of them, their best treatment option will be an oral medication. And because of the way the plans are designed now, it is oftentimes very cost prohibitive for folks to get access to those medications. So if they can pay a copay of $20 or $30 to get the drug injected, we just think it should be fair and that they should have access to those medications, the oral variety, if it is the best standard of care for them at the same cost as they would for the IV medications. So how is this issue progressing? We're very proud of, of how the bill has been moving this year and it's been heard two years previous to now, and it never got a hearing. But we, uh, and the partnership that I have with my colleagues in the Senate, we have 25 co-sponsors for the bill, and it will be up very soon for final passage in the Florida Senate, and we're very proud of that. And we look forward to the House taking the measure up as well. It's been very successful there. About 80, 82 or 83 co-sponsors, Representative yeah, Mayfield's does I saw that, so that was pretty remarkable. It is, Representative Mayfield has done an incredible job to be the voice of, of patients all across the state, and we're, we're just very proud of well, where we are. Well, good luck with it. We'll be looking for updates on Thank that you. and to 
to sort of end or wrap up our program, a question that I'm sure you've been asked before, you know, you're flattered, your name is being tossed around as, as a potential lieutenant governor, um, your thoughts? Well, it is incredibly flattering and humbling that uh, folks would see me in that light, and I know that the governor will choose whoever he feels is the best choice for him in the short term and through the campaign season. I'm incredibly honored to be a Florida senator, and I'm, I'm very happy here, but uh, I wish the governor best in, the best in his search. Thank you, Senator. We appreciate your time, and good luck with the rest of session. Thank you. Thank you. With that, our viewers, thank you for watching. We look forward to seeing you next week.